And now goes the full-time whistle, 4-3. Off yes. oh, promoted into League One as all the players have managed to storm onto the pitch. Yes. Derby, Sunderland, Ipswich, you're going to be eating hummus at the new law next season because Forest Green are in League One. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Fully Charged Show, coming from a football pitch, not the first place you'd expect for a show about sustainable uh, technology and the clean transport revolution. But this is a very special football pitch. It belongs to a very special football club because that stand there has loads of solar panels, there's loads of batteries, there's car charging over there. All the food they serve here is vegan. When they go to an away game, they go on an electric coach that's powered by solar panels. They are pretty special and they're having a big impact on the entire world of football. Because you've got to remember, 3.5 billion people in the world are massive football fans. It's a huge audience and this team is starting to turn the dial just a bit. So that is Forest Green Rovers in Gloucestershire, and this is the Fully Charged Show. So the actual Forest Green adventure began um, just as a rescue mission, and I would say all of the success in, in terms of communicating to a new audience and the profile and stuff like that. Um, that came about afterwards, like, right. it's like a happy accident, you know, so I, I, I went to save my local football club and didn't think anything about it until day one found we were serving red meat and then right. day two found something else and within a week or two realised I had to change so much right. that I'd be creating a green football club and then I said to myself, do you know what, I'll also be taking this message to an audience that stereotypically won't be open yeah. for it, right? And that encouraged me I thought that's worth doing and so we just doubled down created the Green Football Club started the communication with our our fans and next thing you know FIFA say we're the greenest football club in the world the yeah. UN love us and and we can all look at it and say football is the most incredible platform to put out a green message so yeah we got involved in 2010 we were in the conference league at the time it was the club was 123 years old um, and we and Dell really thought well maybe I can just help them out they need a bit of money to help with salaries uh, but really quickly got involved to the point that he became chairman so within about two to three months that was right. by the end of 2010 by 2017 uh, we were promoted, so we got promoted into League Two, but now in 22-23 we're going to be in League One, so right. we've literally just got ourselves promoted. Uh, so as it goes, it's sort of National League, then it's League Two, then it's League One, right. and then Championship, and then on up to the Premiership. Premiership. The dream is the Championship, I'm not sure if we get to Premiership, yeah. but heading in the right direction and do it, yeah, doing really well. So Henry, this is such an extraordinary football team, I think, and a football ground. But can you tell us actually about this literal, the grass we're walking on now? This, this is a bit different to your, to like, well, is it different to what's at Man United, yeah. he said, mentioning another football team? Yeah, absolutely. It's um, an organic vegan pitch. Right. So, <laughs> like everything here, it's vegan and a yeah. bit different, right? Um, but the, yeah, the key is that there's no pesticides, no chemicals, there's no animal products right. um, or animal byproducts. And we won Pitch of the Year last season. Right. Um, so it's not just us that thinks it's great, it's, other, it's voted by other teams. Right. Um, so yeah, no, we're, we're very happy with it. And as you can see at the moment, it's not looking great because it's currently well, going it's through renovation. End of the season yeah. and, and renovation. But then, the, but then the other thing is, which I must admit, I didn't know, because I've been here quite a few times, is the water tank over there. So what is that? What role has that got in the whole scheme of things? A, a big role. So that the water comes down obviously via the rain. Yeah. Um, we drain it under the pitch into the water tank in the corner over there. Right. And then the groundsman has exclusive access to that for sprinklers, etc. Right. So then we're not pulling on the mains water. To water um, the, correct. Water we have a massive problem up because we're top of the hill. Yes. Highest altitude stadium in the league. We've got a massive problem with the water shortage up here. Right. So that's a, that's a big help. Right. And then the stand in front of us there has got solar panels on it. That's, that's right. And you might have to check this with Dale. I, I've heard rumours they were donated to us by Gary Neville. Oh, right. Uh, a long time ago. So they are Gary's solar panels, I believe. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, they, they give us about 20% of our power. Right. Uh, the other 80% coming from the windmill up the road. Um, you know, in the last few years, we've had about 5 billion people sort of in some way engage with us wow. because of what we do. And that's not entirely just because of the football. Yeah. That's because of all the you know, the new practices that we bring in. Yeah. But yeah, every single time we bring something new in, 
Um, that's, you know, it's, it's usually quite expensive to do. It's cutting edge, with, yeah. it's different, but it does bring people on board and they want to, you know, want to do their bit yeah. to follow suit. But, you know, we've seen some big clubs like Southampton, for example, they're doing a lot on sustainability. Right. And I think that's very much driven by what we've done, what's possible. You know, there's, there's much more ripple effect going out now. Yeah. You know, community trusts are doing it as well. We have a community trust, a charity. That's all hoping to, you know, helping to um, communicate sustainability, right. environmental activities. And we can do loads more on, on that score as well. But then there's something else as well. It's not, it's not just the pitch. So, so you've also got batteries in the stadium and that run, does that run the lights that light up the, not all the lights that presumably, but the lights in the stadium, is that right? No, so the, well, the kind of the batteries run the LED boards that you can see oh, right. around here. So we work with the company. The, 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 like the, the, yeah, the boards that the light up. the LED advertising boards. Right. So basically the company we work with ADI wanted to prove that their product could go out into a festival or a field right. with no, uh, no mains, mains connection. Correct, right. and just be run for a weekend festival on the, the wind and the sun, and right. where better place than, than here yeah. to trial it, right? Right, and that's been a successful trial. Yeah, it's been really good, and we've got right. another another year with them, and um, yeah, the brands look so much better on that, obviously, than they do on perimeter boards. This is the most amazing place, I have to say. Right. It's just beautiful setting. A lot of people come because of the setting, yeah. they just love it, but it's not very accessible. Yeah. Um, and as we grow, as we get into you know League One, as we're going now, then we have to get to a point where we can accommodate more people. So we're going to move out onto Junction 13 of the M5. We've got the land already. And then what we'll be doing is building a stadium that is completely low carbon. Right. So we ran a competition initially some years ago, you might remember, yeah. with uh, uh, architects to see who could build us or design us the most in, in environmentally sound stadium. And we went with uh, Zaha Hadid, who won that competition and we have that as the stadium design for when we're ready to go. It's a long complicated story but we're back in planning now working with the council. Right. Um, our, our site has become part of the local plan and right. our big problem eight years ago was that it wasn't. Yeah. But they've looked at it and said, you know what, you're right, it is the best place for employment. We've got a 4,000 uh, job green tech business park as part of that. Right. And, um, and so it's all coming together now in its original concept with the canal, the wetland, the, the job uh, business park, the um, stadium, yeah. all of the nature stuff that we're going to do around it, even, even a bit of sheltered housing actually. I still think we're two years away from being ready to start work right. building. <clears throat> We've still got a road issue to overcome and some other stuff, do you know what I mean? But yeah. it's a big project, so you would expect challenges. Um, and maybe it's another two years to build it, so maybe four years. But, but part of our plan was always go up the leagues, build Eco Park. Right. Now, right. Uh, I don't think we'll be competing at the top end of League One for a couple of years. So, uh, yeah. you know, we can still make it, it happen. Be. Because if we get into the championship there where we are just down the road, I mean, that'll kill that'll us. I, I'm not even sure we can do it, actually. Yeah. So then in a few years when you've moved out of here and you've, you've built the new stadium and the new amazing stuff that's, that's planned down there, what's going to actually happen to this site here then? Yes, yeah, so this site, we were, you know, we'll make sure we do the right thing with it. So the plan is to build eco homes, um, affordable eco homes. So we'll be able to kind of leave that legacy of sustainability all you know not retrofit or brand new right. um, but make them something that people particularly in this area will be able to you know to afford, to afford it's to a live lovely it. area yeah. it's quite difficult to afford to live in this in around in and around here so that would be great if we can do that too yeah, that's our plan I think some people come here thinking they're going to have it all forced down yeah. their throat. It's not even when you walk in at the moment into the stadium, does it, do we shout with the greenest football club right. in the world? We might do a bit more of that in terms yeah. of signage because I think that is important for visitors, in particular those international ones. But it's much more about you kind of fall upon the things that we're doing, you learn about the things. We've got lots of information boards around the, the, the actual ground yeah. so they can learn if they want to, it's up to them. But they're kind of coming and bouncing up against or you know, learning about being green without it being forced, then that does make a big difference. Well, my advice to any club that wants to do the green stuff, big or small, is always the same actually. It, it's actually easier than you think. Not just easier to do, but easier with your fans. You know, your fans will, will take it on board much easier than you think. And uh, just three things to think about, energy, transport and food. They're the right. big three, 80% of all the problems are in there. And uh, tackle them first and worry about the rest later. Often I'm asked, you know, 
what you do is all well and good, but surely it's harder for a bigger club. And of course, the answer is no, it's no, easier. It's easier. It's, yeah. easier. Yeah. it's harder for clubs that are smaller. Yeah. Well, that's all we've got time for, but what an amazing experience to come and learn about how this club is operated, how it's run, what they've got plans for the future. I mean, amazing stuff. And wouldn't it be amazing if some of the really big football clubs that we've all heard of, even if we're not interested in football, you know, the massive ones, were doing something slightly along these lines. There's signs of it around the world, but, you know, as a general rule, it's not really a, a top priority in the world of football. And when you think of the money that goes into football and some of the people who bought football clubs who really got a lot of money, it would have been great if they'd set an example uh, uh, like Dale has done at Forest Green Rovers. Anyway, I won't go on about it, but it, I'm really, really impressed. We're really proud to be associated with this club. The fully charged new lawn is looking exquisite and has no fer uh, artificial fertilizers put on it, and it still works. You can do stuff and you can live in a comfortable, reasonable way without destroying the planet. That's the basic gist of the message. Anyway, as always, please do subscribe to Fully Charged Show if you haven't done already. It doesn't cost you anything, it helps us. Uh, you can have a look at the Patreon link that is in the, the show notes for this show. There'll be a lot of other links in this show. If you're a football club thinking of doing something like this, we'll put a link in the show notes about Forest Green Rovers and the work they're doing. And uh, that's it. As always, if you have been, thank you for watching. Looking for some sunshine and clean air? Well, where better than Southern California this September? We're bringing all of the electric vehicles under the sun and an array of clean technologies to America's finest city this fall. Yes, that's right. Fully Charged Live USA, powered by Electrify America, is coming to San Diego. So for fresh perspectives, exhilarating test rides, electrifying live talks, and all of your favorite YouTubers, Get your tickets today. Well, thank you very much for watching that episode. Robert's just offset having his daily rub down. So while he's doing that, allow me to ask you to watch this episode down here. It's very similar to the one you watched. This episode is our most recent. Here is a link to subscribe to the channel. And this is a link to our Patreon. Bye. <laughs>